Hi everyone, welcome back to Arthritis Broadcast Network. My name is Eileen Davidson. I am a patient, a uh, member of the uh, Arthritis Research Canada Patient Advisory Board. I live with rheumatoid arthritis and today I am interviewing Kelsey Comestic on her very unique experience in rheumatology. Thanks for having me here today. Awesome. Can you tell us a little about yourself and how you got involved in rheumatology? Because you really do have a unique experience. Sure. So I am a master's student at the University of Calgary. Mm -hmm. I'm in my third year of the medical science program there. And I'm working out of the rheumatology clinic at the Alberta Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. As well, I am also a juvenile idiopathic arthritis patient myself. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with polyarticular juvenile idiopathic arthritis mm -hmm. when I was 14 and have been managing it for almost 10 years now. Wow. What made you decide to pursue a career in rheumatology? So it was actually my pediatric rheumatologist that got me involved in research. After I graduated high school, the summer of grade 12, she approached me and asked if I would be involved in the research that she was doing in the rheumatology clinic. And it was because of her passion for research that has um, allowed me to continue to pursue this role for the last seven years under her supervision. So that's how I got started in it, and really once I got involved with the community, it just kept rolling from there. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time that I was meeting with everyone here today, I was discussing our previous study, which was examining barriers at school for children with arthritis, and since then I've continued to have an interest in the social side of how juvenile idiopathic arthritis affects our patients and what we can do as a research community to improve the lives of patients affected by this disease. That's really amazing, especially since you, you're quite young yourself, and so you have that lived experience um, throughout your diagnosis. And you can not only add as a researcher, but the patient voice. So that's, that to me is very, very impressive. Can you tell us how it's been working in the, the field that you also are a patient in? So it's been a really positive experience. I think working with the rheumatology team at the Children's Hospital in Calgary, Alberta has provided with me the opportunity to participate in so many different research studies and they all have patients at the core focus of them. And that's the thing that I like about my master's study right now is that it was really focused on working with our patient partners in the community to develop the study that we have done at the conference this year. Mm -hmm. And overall, it's been a really enjoyable experience. Awesome. Now, what are the benefits and the challenges of being both a researcher with the disease? Um, so starting with the benefits, I feel like by being a researcher who also has juvenile idiopathic arthritis, it allows me to be an advocate in the community and reach out to our patients as well as our parents and families at things such as JIA Family Days and Arthritis Society events to really identify what their needs are as a community. And I'm able to translate their needs into my work as a researcher at the Alberta Children's Hospital. So that's definitely the benefit of that. Okay. And what about the challenges? Um, I think the challenges would just come with being a patient myself. As I'm sure yeah. you know, the symptoms every day we are dealing with the pain, the stiffness, fatigue that comes along with having this disease and learning how to properly address your symptoms while working or going to school and coming up with accommodations to ensure that you can still reach your goals um, have been some of the challenges yeah. but also very rewarding when you are able to reach those goals. Have you found any ways that you've been able to manage being involved in school while dealing with the symptoms or have any advice for anybody who maybe is looking to pursue some more academics but are facing the unknown of living uh, with this unpredictable illness. Sure, so starting with our past study that was examining barriers at school for children with arthritis, there's many resources starting off at a young age available in the school system, such as writing accommodations, the ability to use a laptop, or having a scribe who can take your notes for you. And these resources extend as you go into university. For example, at the University of Calgary, they have a accessibility center that provides you with the opportunity to have extra time on tests and different resources like that. So I really encourage all of our patients to take advantage of those resources because it's been something that I have been able to draw upon myself as a student. I completed my undergraduate degree at the University of Calgary and I'm now in my third year of my master's in science. And by recognizing that I need a little bit more support in my studies, I have still been able to 
um, go where I want to go with wow. with my goals. So. Well, you are definitely an inspiration. And now I had the opportunity to sit with you a little bit earlier at the Canadian Arthritis Research Conference and find out more about you. And there's particularly one fact about you that I am so impressed about is the fact that you are looking to eventually become a rheumatologist. I am, yes. So, yeah. So, my overarching goal it has always been to become a pediatric rheumatologist since this diagnosis and I recently had the opportunity um, to have an interview at the University of Calgary Medical School or receive an invitation for an interview that's coming up on March 4th so I'm really excited to be able to share that with everyone well, because it's been a goal I've been working towards. We're all, we're all rooting for you then because yeah that's really amazing especially since there is such a lack of pediatric rheumatologists in Canada. There is so, yeah. there's definitely that shortage and hopefully if I am able to get into medical school that's an area that I'd be able to work in in the future. Awesome. Now to uh, kind of uh, go on to more about the conference, can you tell us about the poster you're presenting this year? Sure. So as part of my master's thesis, I've worked with our team at the Alberta Children's Hospital as well as our patient partners to develop and evaluate the acceptability of a self-management program for adolescents who have juvenile idiopathic arthritis. And our reason for developing this program was when we were looking into literature, we realized that, that there was really an urgent need for disease information, self-management skills, as well as peer support for teenagers who have arthritis in Canada. So based off that information and using existing evidence from the literature of how to properly develop a self-management program, we worked with our team at the Children's Hospital, which consisted of our rheumatologists, nurses, our physiotherapists, occupational therapists, pharmacists, and our psychologists, as well as some key patient partners who actually have arthritis themselves to develop a self-management program that would target some of these needs. And the topics of the self-management program included things such as an overview of JIA and being diagnosed with the disease, the daily living and exercise component of it, how to cope with the diagnosis of the disease and have some psychosocial strategies, as well as learning how to manage your medications. And our poster at the conference this year was presenting the acceptability phase of this poster. Mm -hmm. So we sat down with groups of patients as well as healthcare providers and asked their feedback on the program to learn how we could better integrate their voice into the program to improve it before actually implementing it into centers. And overall the feedback was well received. Some key results from our poster was that the patient supported a self-management program that was group-based. They liked the idea that the self-management program would be delivered in person, but also via video conference, so we could reach some of our patients who are wanting to attend the self-management program, but live in a rural setting. Mm. They liked the idea of a healthcare provider facilitating the session, so we could improve the trustworthiness of the information, and they really liked the idea of the opportunity to gain peer support by having interactive discussions and group opportunities to meet other peers who have juvenile arthritis. That's really great. I like the fact that you've also included the the what like the, the many different people that are used to treat arthritis because it's not just your rheumatologist. There's the physical side, the emotional side, and all there's so many different ways people uh, kind of just maybe put off and you only kind of go to the main one doctor. So that's really good that you are utilizing so many different avenues into your work. Um, now how did you use the patients? What was their involvement like? Great, so we worked with multiple patient partners and they were involved from the beginning of our study until the results. So we sat down with them one-on-one -on -one and really discussed with them what do you need out of a self-management program and if you could have any self-management program in the world, what would it look like? And the patients that we worked with were so instrumental to doing this research, both in the development phase as well as participants when we are evaluating the acceptability of it, because we really wanted to include their voice because at the end of the day, the self-management program was for the teens. Mm -hmm. We wanted something that was patient-centered and that would address the needs that they face on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Now, you are definitely an expert in arthritis, being somebody that researches it and lives with it. What self-management skills would you recommend for 
any teenager or child living with arthritis. So the three key areas that we mentioned in our program was the disease information, overall self-management skills, as well as the peer support aspect. I think touching on peer supports again, I'm the co-founder of the National Teen Arthritis and Auto-Inflammatory Group with Can in Canada. It was co-founded with another young adult with JIA, Jocelyn Smith. And I think this is a key component to managing your JIA because it teaches you that you're not alone when you're diagnosed with a disease. It shows you that you can still be quote unquote normal even if you have a chronic disease and it provides you with the opportunity to share tips as well as discuss the challenges that you've experienced as a patient. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really important for um, your mental health moving towards being diagnosed with the disease. Yeah. And then just continuing to access credible information about your disease, really taking the opportunities to learn as much as you can. Jennifer Simpson has an excellent website called the Teens Taking Charge Managing JA online website for both patients as well as parents that provides some credible information to learn about your disease. And when you're more educated, you're able to go into your appointments and ask the key questions for your healthcare providers and leave an appointment feeling like you are advocating for your own health and that you're forming an effective partnership with your physician. Amazing. And another great place for people who are or children living with arthritis is Cassie and Friends, which I'm understanding you are quite involved with. Can you tell us that's about that? Yeah, so I'm involved with Cassie and Friends in a few avenues. One is the Teen Arthritis and Auto-Inflammatory Group. Mm -hmm. We have partnered with Cassie and Friends to expand the Teen Arthritis and Auto-Inflammatory Group, also known as TAG, across Canada. And with that, TAG is now operating in Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, London, Ontario, Toronto, and Halifax. So if you are a teen between the ages of 12 to 17 mm -hmm. who feels like they would benefit from a peer support group, that is one avenue that Cassie and Friends is working to grow across Canada. Also with Cassie and Friends, we have really focused on develop developing some school resources for patients as well as their families while navigating throughout the healthcare system. And if you go on their website, we've developed a school checklist with various healthcare providers that families can use as they navigate GIA diagnosis and the school board system. They've also developed an excellent puppet show that mm -hmm. can be I've had the pleasure of seeing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shown to schools and various resources. And one last thing also in regards to the peer support is the Youth Leader Network. Yes. And what this is, is a group of young adults who work with Cassie and friends and are involved with their, within their organization through different advocacy means. So there's a lot of great work being done from that side of things. And they do an amazing family day, which is where I originally met you. They so. do, yes. And their upcoming family day is in Cal agree on April, I think it's the 18th. Yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah, I'm coming up soon in spring at the Alberta Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we have any questions in you? What would you say to children who are afraid to disclose their disease in fear of being isolated by other kids? That's a great question and I know that's a concern with many of our patients. Are people going to treat me differently if I tell them about my disease? Am I going to be bullied? Different things like that. I think the biggest thing that has helped me with managing my disease is being open with it, um, whether it's my peers, my friends, my teachers, and I find that when people know about my disease, they are able to support me and provide me with additional resources to assist me, whether it's in school or at work. So I would really encourage everyone to be open about their disease, and I also feel like when you share your experience, it provides a safe space for other patients to talk about their experience as well mm -hmm. and show them that they're not alone and that they can still continue living the life that they want to live. And from your personal experience, how do you stay positive and uh, manage stress? Okay, another great question. I think at the root of my diagnosis, I've always believed, and with my family support as well, that having arthritis doesn't define who you are. And I think that's really important to remember as you continue on throughout your journey. I think a positive outlook on life has and a very um, has had an extremely beneficial effect on my life because I just kind of keep pushing forward as I'm sure you have to yes. the challenges that you face um, if you address them from a positive light are so much easier to overcome and I think this helps mm -hmm. with managing their stress as well knowing that you can do it if you just kind of keep pushing forward and relying on the people that you have around you your friends and your family knowing that they're here to support you and that you can continue living that 
that life that you still dreamed of prior to your diagnosis. And to follow up on your comment earlier, we hold up the date. So the Calgary Family Day Conference is Saturday, April 18th. 18th, yes. And the Toronto Family Day Conference is Saturday, May 9th. Okay, yes. great. So if you're in Cross Canada, please attend those if you have a child with JIA or volunteer if you have arthritis, because that's what I've done to be involved. I am not obviously not a child with arthritis, but I volunteered. Um, and I just want to thank you today for being an inspiration for all those people that are living with arthritis and also researching arthritis. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here today.